Welcome to the Finance Therapist Podcast. I'm your host, Michelle Pava, here to guide you through the sometimes confusing world of finances with a therapeutic touch. I have a lot of exciting content today, focusing on back to school financial therapy and tips for parents of children from kindergarten through college. A special hello to our listeners, not only in the United States, but also Canada, Brazil, the UK, and Kuwait. In these countries, we are ranking, and I am thrilled about it. So remember to check out our free resources available to help you navigate through your financial journey. And let's talk about back to school. Some of you already know this, some of you don't. I am a mother and a grandmother, and I have over two decades of preparing children for school, whether it was preschool or college, even some postgraduate certificates. So I've also explored, as a family, we've explored actually, different types of education from private schools to public schools to homeschooling. So I'm going to give you a very gestalt idea of how to prepare for school, whether it's kindergarten through college and different types of education that you might be looking at. So as the new year approaches, it's exciting and it can also be stressful. It's crucial to address these financial challenges that come with it. So whether you have a kindergartner or a college student, these financial demands can be overwhelming while sometimes also being exciting. And there's a lot of emotion tied into it. So here's some tips to help you manage. So first of all, we're going to be talking about budgeting for supplies. So for K to 12, I want you to make a list. Now I'm recording this in July and I know that might seem early because you're not really probably thinking a whole lot about preparing for September quite yet. For some of you, you're going to be looking at August, mid-August, end of August school start, but I want you to start thinking about it right now. Um, Actually, it would have been good if I did this podcast a month ago because I am someone who likes to prepare early. So a lot of the sales that you see, yeah, they're sales, but some of them are going to be loss leaders, which really are the sale that is too good to be true, right? It's the one penny notebook or the 10 cent notebook that gets you in the store. But then everything else might be a little bit more expensive. A loss leader is something that retail stores do to just get you in the door. And traditionally, Many of the other items are going to be, like I said, a little bit more expensive. So you want to focus on if you're going to go into a store and purchase a loss leader, if you have a list and you have an idea of what you're going to spend and what the going rates of said items are, you're going to be less inclined to overpay where you don't need to. So the loss leader is actually something that when you go into the store, you think you're getting a great deal. 10 cents a notebook, this as an example, very common, but that is also, they're they're not losing money, let's put it that way. They're making up for it with everything else they hope you're going to buy. And for the most part, most people, once they're in a store and once they see the temptations and the bright colors and all the things, they're probably not going to leave the store. They're going to stay at that store where they got the great deal and they're going to do their shopping there. That's why department stores have such a high profit because even if some of the prices aren't great, you're probably going to stay there because your cart's already full and you don't want to spend your whole day going from store to store. So I want you to make a list. It is so important to make a list. It is preparation and it's prevention for overspending. So start making that detailed list of all the necessary supplies. So you might want to have two different lists going, the necessary supplies and also the the wish list, the desires. Sticking to this will help you to avoid overspending. I want you to also look for those sales and coupons. So look for the loss leaders that might be happening already right now. And stores like Target and Walmart and Staples often have back to school sales. Websites like Retail Me Not, they can also help you find different deals and coupons. So just keep your eye out right now. Don't think about, you know, writing a quick list this morning and uh, going right out and, and purchasing. Take a few days to really research. 
because getting the best deal now is going to not only train you to continually look for the best deals, but also help you not be impulsive in your shopping. So sales and coupons are important, but they're not so important. So let me explain. Like I was talking about loss leaders, sales and coupons are there to get you in with the hopes of you purchasing more. So sometimes you might find that going to a store that's really not having extravagant sales might actually be where you save more money. So definitely look at different areas like that. If you live near an Aldi, they tend to have lower prices all of the time. That center aisle in Aldi will often have back to school items. I know that right now, and this is about mid-July, uh, going towards the end of July, I know that they have a lot of items right now for college or prepping that dorm room or prepping the high school bedroom for a more studious feel. So you might want to look also at your local grocery stores and you might want to also look at different department stores that are not maybe having those big extravagant sales. And remember, the sales flyers, the advertising that you see on television, the billboards, all of that costs money. And those costs are brought to you. You're paying for the billboard. You're paying for the circulars. You're paying for the Facebook ads. So this is all part of what you're paying for. So you want to make sure that you look at where is your money best spent. Sometimes it is the store that is not as flashy, that is not spending as much on advertising. At the same time, some of these really big conglomerates have enough money to spend the the budget on the marketing and you're still going to get a good deal. So what I'm trying to say here is you have to do your research for the area in which you live and also look at online options like Amazon as well. Now, you want to also look at bulk buying. This is a great idea if you could get a couple of people together in your neighborhood or in your friend group or your kids' friend groups, especially if you homeschool or are at a charter school. Bulk buying can be a great idea. So consider buying in bulk from warehouse stores like Costco or Sam's Club, especially for items like paper, pencils, notebooks. This can also happen online. If you go onto Amazon and you just hit wholesale or bulk with the item that you want. So maybe pencils, and I know a lot of people don't use pencils as much. I'm just using an example. Pencils plus bulk or pencils plus wholesale you're going to start to see bulk items on Amazon. So you might want to get other people involved with that. Also for the K to 12 age group, think about thrift stores and dollar stores. Thrift stores often have gently used supplies at a fraction of the cost. Dollar stores can be great for basic items like pens, markers, and notebooks. Also think about dollar stores and thrift stores for folders. I know that the last time that I was at, I believe it was Goodwill uh, in Chester County, Pennsylvania, they had to have 60 or 70 of the, you know, the, the hard white folders that are just usually between five and $10. I mean, they had all different thicknesses. So you might want to look at thrift stores. Now that said, I am not trying to put you on a wild goose chase. Okay. I know that time is also money and time is best spent with your family and that gas costs money as well. But if you can do some of this research and then make a plan to spend one morning hitting maybe first goodwill, and then the dollar store. And whatever you don't find at Goodwill or whatever thrift store you're going to, whatever uh, thrift store or dollar store, whatever you don't find, then maybe you go to the next largest store that maybe isn't quite as fancy, but you've done your homework, right? So you know if you're getting a good deal or not as compared to the stores that are already letting you know how much everything costs. So it'll be easy for you to price comparison. Understand that even if you have Amazon Prime, what's been happening lately, the trend is 
that Amazon Prime, if it's one or two days, sometimes it's coming two or three days or four days after. So don't do this too close to the school you're starting. The, the sooner you do this, the better. Now, what about college? So textbooks cost a lot of money. And if you have a young adult entering college, you may not know this, but there are websites like Chegg, C-H-E-G-G, or Amazon that have books that are discounted and used. And sometimes they're not even used. Sometimes they're just discounted. But also check out your college bookstore. They have a used section normally. But if not, again, Chegg, Amazon, these are definitely ways that you can purchase books on discount and also rent them. Renting textbooks can also be a very effective option. So let's talk about dorms and really include it with dorms. I want to add that your middle or high school student may also want a more studious room, a quiet space to focus on studies, and that's always a good idea. So stores like Ikea, Target, Walmart, they offer affordable dorm room furniture, decor, and supplies. But don't forget, check out those local thrift stores. They usually have very unique and inexpensive items. And remember that the average dorm room supply is only being used three to five years and then being donated usually. So check those out. Also check out local garage sales. Now, I also want to state that a lot of times you can hit something like, uh, we have a store here called Five Below or a dollar store that is maybe not always a dollar, but dollar plus or a dollar general, where items might be between one and $15 total. Those stores often will have items as well. So you wanna make sure that you're really looking at all of your options and don't discount, no pun intended, some of the stores that you might not think have furniture and decor because this is the time of year that they are going to have it in there. So let's talk now about educational expenses. This is going to be a little bit different. So we need to look at school programs and community resources. So for K-12, to many schools offer free or reduced cost supplies and materials. Check to see if your school has partnerships with local businesses or discounts with local businesses. They might also have programs set up where they already are receiving grant money to help anyone who might be struggling. So you might have to qualify for some of this help, but if you do, kind of great if you do and it's available for you, but if you don't qualify technically, there still is usually an option for anyone to take advantage of local business discounts. Also check with your local chamber of commerce. Now, this is what you do. You write to them and you ask them, is anyone offering or would they be willing to offer any kind of a discount and let them get back with you? I guarantee they're going to send an email out to their entire chamber and they're going to say, hey, who wants to start offering discounts? We could put something together because they're always looking at ideas and ways to drum up business. So if they put together some kind of a discount and let you know about it, they're going to start to let other people know about it as well. So make sure that you stay connected to your local chamber of commerce. For community resources, you want to look into obviously community centers, libraries, nonprofit organizations. They often offer free or low cost solutions and resources and programs. For your college age student, I want you to apply for as many scholarships and grants as possible. Websites like FastWeb, and scholarships.com can help you find opportunities. You can also find opportunities at your local library and at your school. Now understand that if you go to your school, everybody is going to be going to the same office. So there might be say between two and 10 people working in the financial aid office. And they're going to be dealing with hundreds of people looking for scholarships. So that's one area to go, but at the same time, you want to look at other different options. Don't put all your eggs in one basket just at the school. So go ahead and look at fastweb.com and also scholarships.com. Check out books that are in your library. I know it sounds a little bit dated to just go to the library and look at scholarship books, but a lot of them are still valid and they're going to have a lot of different opportunities that you might not have thought about. Also look into financial aid. Find 
and fill out your FAFSA early to maximize your aid potential. And don't forget to check for state-specific financial aid programs as well. There's a lot of them that actually often go under the radar. Okay, this next one is a biggie. Planning for extracurricular activities. For K-12, to well... Yeah, let's just start with K to 12. So one big thing that happens is there might be local karate schools and local dance schools and and that's great and do those things if you can afford them, if you want, but there are other options. So many schools offer low cost or free extracurricular programs. Check with your school for available options. If they are low cost or even at a cost that you feel like you can't afford, talk to the school. There really should be opportunities for you to participate in anything that you need that you feel will enrich your child. So look into that. Be a little bit of a squeaky wheel, okay? Look into community centers as well. Local community centers or organizations like the YMCA often offer affordable extracurricular activities. Now, I want to mention that there's a man that I do publicity for, and he is an incredible karate instructor and he uses only community centers and churches but he is someone who has won many awards and he's he's fabulous so don't overlook the fact that you might be able to get into a community center where these activities are free and still work with really expert level individuals so the reason why some people do that is because they're just not focused on making a lot of money they're not looking at it as a business they're looking at it as a passion so look into those opportunities as well now this is for everyone but especially if you're homeschooling if you're homeschooling there's a lot of free or low-cost resources there's something called the Khan Academy K-H-A-N, academy.com, and Coursera. They offer a wide range of educational materials, including the arts and entertainment. So understand also that in most states, if not all, for homeschoolers, you still can participate in your local public school activities. So you can still participate in sports and different clubs. So check with the school as well for that. And by the way, put everything in writing for any of these uh, tips that I'm giving you. Make sure you're emailing or following up with an email and regurgitate the conversation that you had on the phone. I'm just a big fan of put it in writing because no one can argue with the black and white, right? So put it in writing. So if you have a conversation with someone and they say, oh yes, absolutely, your homeschool child can take our after school jewelry making club, you know, they can participate in that. You don't want to show up and them say, oh, we never said that. You're not a part of our school. So if you have it in writing, you can say, oh, wait, like I have the email right here. So you want to do this, whether you're homeschooling or college, K-12, charter school, public school, private school, keep it in writing. I used to be an advocate for security on campus, it was called, and I am a big, big proponent of keeping it in writing. So let's look at also college. You want to have some kind of a balance of academic and extracurricular activities. You want to avoid overcommitting and overspending, but you still want to have some kind of a balance. So don't focus on, I know you want your kids to do well, I, I get it, but if you only focus on the academics and not them enjoying life, and that includes having some downtime, they're probably not going to do well long term. They might do well short term, and then they might start having anxiety and some other issues and illnesses. So make sure there's balance. Every healthy person needs a level of balance. So you have your academic, you have your extracurricular activities, clubs, whatever, and you also have to have some downtime to avoid overcommitting and also overspending because clubs and organizations can become costly. So Joining clubs and organizations, I am a very big proponent of. It offers value and also networking opportunities without a lot of the high costs of some other types of programs. Many colleges have a variety of student organizations, and usually they're really low membership fees. But also look at if your student is going 
uh, away or even to a local college, even if they're living at home and going to college, look at different types of opportunities, even volunteerism that might be local, which is sort of like a club or an organization where they are meeting other people and networking and also having outreach. I'm also a very big prom- proponent of volunteering. So let's think about some financial tips now. I want to um, just take a quick break and we're going to come back with some financial tips that have a lot to do with the election and budgets. Okay, we are back. Let's look at the election. So we have an election coming up in the United States and usually with elections, there's some market fluctuations. It has no bearing on if people are concerned about who might be getting into office. It's just something that happens almost every time there's an election that there's some fluctuation in the market. Historically, election years bring a little bit of economic uncertainty, and that's usually with one or both sides. So it can just be one side that creates it or both sides create it. Markets may fluctuate based on political developments So just stay informed, avoid making impulsive financial decisions based on a short-term market change. So in essence, don't sweat it too much if the market goes down and don't celebrate too much if it goes up. Just keep a level head and know that emotions drive money and that includes the economy. Now, the next thing is an emergency fund. And I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this because I know that there are some people that just can't afford it. And this is going to make them feel maybe some shame or blame. And that is not my intent at all. If you can afford an emergency fund, great. Then have it in place, add to it. And it's there, as you know, to cover unexpected expenses during times of economic uncertainty or any economic time. There really is no time where there's economic certainty, right? So anything can happen with money on a pivot. So if you can't afford an emergency fund, I just wanna state right now that I know that every single guru is gonna tell you you have to have an emergency fund. But I know, because I've been broke before, and you might know if you're struggling, that if it's between taking that $5 and feeding your child and taking that $5 and putting it in an emergency fund, you're gonna feed your child. So I want you to prioritize as you're spending generally, and I want you to focus on not just hitting every single sale because it's cheap, because I know a lot of people that do that, but really prioritizing what you're spending. So that is a big deal. So emergency fund, if you have one, great. If you don't have one yet, don't sweat it because you'll get there. So also investment strategies. If you don't have an emergency fund, it might be hard for you to invest and that's okay. So listen up because this is your future, but I want you to diversify. Diversify your investments to mitigate risks. Consider consulting a financial advisor, talk to your talk to them about, you know, an investment strategy or just do your own research to keep up on the current economic climate. Stay informed. It's really important to stay on top of financial news and trends to make an informed investment decision. Now, my newsletter, The Portfolio, is a combination of financial news, therapy news, and financial therapy. So it's a little bit of everything. So if you don't want to do the scrounging around yourself, you can just sign up for my portfolio. I usually hit some of the hot topics and I do this about once a month. So you're not going to get it every single week, but you're going to get a good idea of what's happening with the economy every month without you having to do that if you don't want to. So that's one thing. So staying informed is very important. Also tax planning. A lot of people forget this and it's important to be on top of it. So stay updated on any tax law changes that might come with the new administration. Plan ahead to take advantage of any new tax benefits or to prepare for potential increases depending on where you are financially. Always consult with a professional, so a tax professional, whoever it is that you go to for your taxes, make sure that you are making the most of the available deductions and credits, especially when it comes to your child's education. So that's all for today's episode of the Finance Therapist Podcast. I hope these tips have helped you to navigate the back to school season and prepare for the economic changes that might come with this autumn and election. Don't forget to check out my free resources to support you on your financial journey. And again, thank you to 
everyone in the USA, especially Canada, Brazil, and the UK and Kuwait for tuning in. I am so excited when I look at those stats and I see that you guys are ranking me. I am so thankful. It means I'm giving you some kind of value and feel free to email me to let me know what you want more of. And I will definitely listen to that. So until next time, stay financially healthy and take care.